Okay, hi, second grade readers. Um, we just recently, in our Wonders book, we read about rainforest, right? And we have talked so much about nonfiction text features this year. So text features are just uh, ways that um, things that help organize the text to make it easier to read so and to understand. So things like a map, that's a nonfiction text feature, right? Headings, that's a nonfiction text feature. Um, words that are, are bolded or somehow highlighted, that's a nonfiction text feature. Um, labels, labels, Another nonfiction text feature. So this rainforest um, text had so many nonfiction text features. Headings, it had maps, it had labels, charts. It does have some charts in here. Um, charts are sort of like another way to organize um, information, right? And captions, sometimes you'll see a photo in a nonfiction text and then underneath it'll tell you more about that photo. That's a caption. So those are ones that we're sort of used to, we've talked a lot about, and I wanted to talk to you about a few more nonfiction text features that you might not be as familiar with, or you might, I don't know, maybe this is review for you. A glossary, is in is a common thing in a nonfiction um, book. Usually it's in the back and it's kind of like a dictionary. So it takes important words from the book or from the text and it gives the definition of those words. So it's kind of like a special dictionary built in to help you understand the important words for that text. Okay, that's a glossary. And an index, an index is in usually in the back of a nonfiction text, and it is an alphabetized list of all of the important things that are, that have been covered in that nonfiction text. So if you were like looking up um, wood burning fireplaces for some reason, I don't know, you could look in the back of the book and look under W for wood or look under F for fireplaces and see if the text has any information about that before you go to the bother of reading the whole entire book. Um, and then it'll, uh, the index will tell you which pages it talks about that certain thing. And a table of contents is usually in the front of a nonfiction text. And it tells you what, it's kind of like showing you the chapters almost. It's telling you what is going to be covered. So I have some examples of those. Let's see. This book, I just grabbed from our um, bookshelves. This book, such a cool book if you like to be crafty, crafts for kids. Um, this book has a table of contents in the front and it even says contents. Right, it says that um, in the first section, you can create a few characters. In the second section, you can build a little world. The seventh section, you can give something handmade. So this is a table of contents. It tells you the con what the contents are, right? Okay, so that's a table of contents. Um, in the back of this book, the encyclopedia of the cat, if you wanted to know more about cats, this is the book for you. In the back, there's a glossary. And the glossary says it has all these different words that showed up that were important in this book. And it gives a definition of those. Very interesting. The nose pad is the hardened skin surrounding the nostrils, for example. There you go, for a cat. The muzzle is the nose and jaws of a cat. There you go, so this is a glossary. It's usually in the back and it usually comes before the index. And I have a good example of an index in this cookbook, how to cook everything, just in case you wanted to know. In the back is an index and it's got, oh, everything listed in order, alphabetical order. So let's say you wanted to know about pasta. Oh no, let's do cookies. I like cookies better than pasta. Okay, so I'm gonna look under C for cookies. 
Do, 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 do. Cookies, where are you? L M N O. Hold on. Cookies. Oh my gosh. So here is where it says cookies. You see that? And you can learn the basics of, of cookies, biscotti. You can learn how to make chocolate chip cookies, oatmeal cookies, sugar cookies. It says fun to make with kids cookies, gingerbread cookies, shortbread cookies. Oh my gosh. So this tells me which pages to look at if I want to learn about how to make gingerbread cookies, for example. So this is an index index. When it gives a definition of some of the important words, like I showed you in the cap book, that's a glossary. And when it's at the beginning of the book, and it tells you about all the different things that will be in that book, that's the table of contents. Okay. So more nonfiction text features for you to consider a glossary, an index, a table of contents, and then these are our old standbys, right? Headings, maps, labels, charts, and captions. Photographs, I could have added photographs. Lots of times there are photographs. Um, there you go. Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to show me an example of one of these things. So bonus points, if you can find a glossary where they're defining some words for you or an index like in the recipe book, or a table of contents at the beginning of a nonfiction book that tells us not chapters, but it's a nonfiction book that tells us what kinds of things are in that nonfiction book. Um, if you can find a heading or a map or a label or a chart or a caption, that's good too, okay? But I'm really looking for these, oh my gosh. All right, and I want you to show us in the video below and I'll demonstrate in a video below what, what I'm looking for, okay? Okay, can't wait to see what you come up with at your house. You can use your wonders book too. If you don't have any other nonfiction books, you can show us in a wonders book, okay?